All right, so we're back with the primed base. Actually, I think it's quite nice um, to see when you have like a uh, steeper angle that you spray the white. It even leaves the side of the base black, so we didn't really uh, work on that. So this is just pure, uh, pure foundation. And I think it's quite quite good to see we spread from, from this angle here, from this side. And that just gives like a very nice highlight on there. Um, and we will continue with plenty of wash in there to give it a first uh, warmer brown tone. Uh, we will do that with the Strong Tone Wash from Ami Painter. You can see in the back of the palette I have just plenty of that. If you, um, if you didn't have any of the Army Painter, you could make your own wash, right? Um, yeah, you could with uh, some either retarder or um, some medium. Because the, the nice thing about this wash here is that it's not just like diluted paint. Um, because the consistency is nice, it flows a lot nicer into you, the recesses. You have a broken surface tension on the skin of the water, yeah. the liquid, right? And that's to help everything just get into all the recesses and coat everything smooth. Mm -hmm. right. Bones a really nice effect, I like that. That's yeah, quite nice because they also just from from the shape they just really nicely break up that round gravel. And because there would be bones, right? I mean it's it's not as if these these people just have a fetish for cutting people's heads off there. <laughs> and collecting them and then Again, the, yeah, the, the, the bodies <laughs> just stumbled for somewhere. Maybe maybe that's what they did. They had uh, different pools, like one for arms, one for legs, yeah. one for, for torsos. <laughs> So would you say the the trick with this is that you you don't want like to absolutely drown the base in the wash, but you still want to, to be you know to have a fair bit on your brush, and the the trick is really just to 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 move where the the pool of the wash is to to get that that shadow. Yeah, I think the the most important part here in this step is that you really uh, get it into the recesses and to the, like the the. Uh, to the eye sockets of the skull, for example, and down there. So that's really dark. On the, here, up here, it's quite good because you, because of that uh, high surface tension of the the wash, you can easily push it um, to where you want it to dry. Right. So like here, for example, in the recesses, that will have like a very nice effect once it's dry. Uh -huh. Okay, and you just have to make sure that you don't have any pure white peeking out from down there. All right, so uh, let that dry. And then we're back to do some more <laughs> uh, selective highlights. All right, you can see uh, the wash is dry. It's, uh, also see it, it's quite nice how it dried. It's a nice flat finish. Um, and yeah, none of the white is really shining through. You have just that nice, uh, decent highlight. Um, in the next step, we have to uh, work a little on the uh, individual skulls. You have to keep in mind uh, when you want to save some time, um, as I want to fill um, some blood into the these uh, puddles. Um, so you don't have to really spend a lot of time blending these parts that will be covered. But you still need to have them with a nice little highlight on there, quite bright because um, as the blood is uh, yeah red, you still want these highlights to shine through the right. the, the red. Mm. But let's say if you had like 
30 uh, bases built for, for your army. You, you, I mean, even that effect's just quite nice as it is. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah. You, you could just do the, the black-white spray, use a nice wash, and you've got something good for the table. Yeah, and maybe do a slight dry brushing over it to get some of the texture back. Okay. And uh, I think then it could look already nice. You could just clean up the sides of the base and, and keep it like that. Sure. Um, but yeah, as we... Um, have such a fancy paint job on our corgos. <laughs> uh, I want to also make sure that the base matches the same level. Um, it's okay to be a bit rougher in general on the base than on the miniature to have also the focus more, more on the miniature than on the base, but nevertheless you still want to, to have it like in the same level more or less. Um, so I mix some rucksack 10 with black and Let me start with, let's find a nice skull to start with. <laughs> okay, we will start with that here, this here. And we will just preserve some of the um, transition that we already have in the black and white foundation, or from the black and white foundation. So we're working a bit thinner. Then we would usually start with. And this uh, again, the, would you say this comes back to the to the nature of acrylic paint, the way the the, the translucency, mm -hmm. um, and, and often when you you put that first bit of color on there, you might think that's a bit extreme, but as you start to add more and more, it it, it brings it together. Yeah, so I'm just just added a little bit of white to to the mix. Yeah, I think if Michael had have got you to paint that other base, we uh, we, we might have lost you to the insane asylum. <laughs> yeah, 2,000 plus skulls is not a thing, and especially not on Mondays. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, um, actually we were just doing like a little, lo little loaded brush on these, um, but we're not going like totally crazy with the... Um, with the finesse of the blending. Something like this though, this this could be a really good um, thing to practice the loaded brush on, right? Yeah, true, because um, you you don't necessarily need a super fine finish and it still looks looks good and you can practice and get better from skull to skull. Sure, and if ultimately if it all does go wrong, it, it's not like with the miniature you, you freak out that maybe you, you repaint it with some primer or something to start again. It, it's, it's the base that you've put together using you know, bits of sprue that you've made the bones out of, like the bay, you know, it's it's a fairly, it's not a very expensive process yeah. to, to make something that looks this good. And most of us really do have a lot of uh, spare skulls in, spare their, skull. <laughs> in, in, their, in their biz box, so. Uh. Uh, but it's, uh, that, that's a good point, actually, I think, and even if you don't have those skulls in your box, you could still do something like this, but just do it with the, the bones that you've made. Yeah. Yeah, but the these skulls also give like uh, quite some nice little detail actually on the on the base. So, um, but even in the uh, in the uh, Edge of Sigma box, there are some skulls that are spare that you can use for the base. Oh really? Yeah. yeah oh nice.
both of these bones here. Nice thing again, just with the side of the brush, you can really nicely highlight actually all these bones. Okay, just uh, not to bore you guys, I think I will complete the rough blending on the skulls uh, and we'll be back for the next step. Uh, could I just ask if, if maybe you felt that something had gotten too bright, you could always take some of the army painter and just give it a, a thin glaze over to bring it back down again? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the army painter is really nice because uh, it's quite translucent, and uh, but it still gives that nice little touch of color. So. Um, also, as we drenched everything in, in that tone, it's quite good to do, bring things together with that again. I wouldn't say you drenched it, but I mean, I've, I've given you some examples <laughs> of, of, of really drenching a figure. But... Yeah, but it was actually for, for at least for, for uh, my usual style of painting, there right, was really okay. a, lot of, a lot of paint going on there. Like, oh. but I'm sitting here thinking, yeah, it's not that one. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. So, um, back with the skulls in the base beige. Um, I've uh, just tried to highlight these elements here, like the little round stippled on highlights. Um, so I can just show you. So just put it like that. They don't need to be like super soft, but you still want to get like this nice round reflex on there that shines through the the um, blood later on. Um, just to get a better uh, feel for for the uh, overall color of the base, I will paint the stone parts in a in a dark bluish black to uh, to have them uh, just in a different color, not the same brown than the skulls. Um, you can see I've um, added a little bit of um, the dark sea blue to the palette and a bit of black here in the front. Is there any particular reason that you've picked to use a blue to, to make the black slightly off color than opposed to say like a, like red or purple or green or mm -hmm. I think we because we uh, used also the blue tones on the on the carcass a lot so um, I think it just fits better with the miniature too sure and um, people might be would, would you say it, people might be tempted to paint the black first and then do the skulls for fear of hit it hitting you know the, the the skulls with the the brush would would you recommend that at all or is it would you is there a, is there a reason why you've done it this this particular order mm, no actually there's there's no reason um okay so you could do it either way yeah you can do it either way um i think i did the skulls first to check out whether it needs a different color because we could have also gone with a like a, that dark desaturated brown, right? Also just gone a bit darker, but yeah, for my taste, it was just too too much the same. And the the consistency of the paint that you've got going on is it's fairly thin. Yeah. Because we still want to preserve some of that black white. And I like that a lot more the contrast between the skulls and the the surrounding earth. Typically I notice with the, the figures you when you tend to finish off the the lip of the base you, you go with like a pure black because you've got such a dark colour now for the earth. Will you do the same? Maybe, maybe would you do like a, a graveyard earth type type colour? 
Mm, I prefer actually to keep the sides of the base black because for me it's like the the uh, somehow like a frame on a picture. Right. Um, it's just really nice to have it dark and not really. You don't really have to think about colors when you just make it black. Sure. And uh, all other colors could really interfere with the model, but the black is just so reduced that it's like okay, one step back. Right. Just black. It's really amazing how how. The, the transition and how different it looks and and yeah. when you when you said to do black on top i was first like oh really is that gonna look good but it's, it's as you said you, you've got the, the transitions underneath and just that light layer of it it's so nice so just some some black for the sides even if we uh we uh, later on maybe even do some selective dry brushing to the black parts um we still want to clean the base in between the, the side of the base to get a better feel. So everything is looking good. But you can see here we really got like a nice edge on the base. It's really sharp. You don't see any of the the seam line. And that's pretty much straight out of the bottle right but yeah. you've, you've got the water on your brush to, to just help it flow nicely because you, you you know you just you just want that that solid coat and you don't have the detail to worry about all right um side of the base is dry um i would do a little uh, dry brushing to the side here to uh, get some of that texture um i will mix a light gray Uh, but, and how how are you mixing the gray? Just just some of the the dark, the just the, black and white, uh, or some of, some of the uh, the base mix. Base mix with a little bit of blue in there. Okay. And that's the the Schmincke white you used. Yeah. Okay. So, so so when you when you're doing this it's like it's really important to to get the majority of the paint off and you just check it on your hand before so it's yeah that would, okay um and another thing that is interesting is that i don't go all the i just try to brush from one direction okay so that way i just hit the surface from from one side and it, that will have you will get a nice impression of light other than if you would do it like that, you would have uh, the highlights on, on all the sides. Ah, okay. So there is a fine art to dry brushing. <laughs> That's really cool, dude. And with the same, because I think this already looks quite nice, uh, with the same highlight tone, we can just go ahead and um, highlight some of these cracks and and if so you've never done something like the the dry brushing floor if this is you you're watching this and you've you've never painted don't uh don't take your good brushes yeah and we do that it it, it will mark them pretty quickly <laughs> yeah we just took a old one uh, just make sure the the size is uh, fitting the the scale of the where you want to dry brush so we first had this here but that, that it was, was, it was a bit big. way too big so we went for a for old uh, davinci and if, size if four. And, and we're saying to use old brushes but let's say you know you you have just picked up your first paint set just maybe get like buy a cheap brush yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. just just to, so you know it's for that purpose for mixing paint for dry brushing, and I, th I think we all have one. It's just like your your old friend that that you you can't quite get rid of, so he's been relegated to dry brushing <laughs> yeah, yeah. To, to keep on going. Right, um, that looks good so far. Let's check with uh, with Corvus. What do you think, Corvus? Well, I think it's better. <laughs> 
Sorry. You just have to find the, the red position for him. That was something you did actually um, earlier on when you were priming. You made sure to, when you did the light mm -hmm. spraying for the zenithal, you, Ben took the figure and he, he, he checked the direction and so so you wouldn't want the light kind of shining, like the, the spray right. coming from the back. You want it to be like the, the front from an angle, in, in the same direction you've been painting yeah. the figure. Yeah, yeah that works really nice. Um, I also like the the real uh, the the darkness of the base. It uh, I think it's quite good because the red armor looks a lot more vibrant because of that. Sure. Um, so this skull here will be uh, more visible because it's just next to to the uh, feet of Corgus. So we have to make sure that we uh, work a little bit better on, on these here because these here will be rather hidden under the uh, under the cape uh, so I think they're already quite good like that but uh, those on the front needs to be a little bit finer mm. so so what are you what are you doing there yeah um I've remixed some of that base color with uh, from rucksack tan and black and I'm just working a little bit on the on the shadows to get a cleaner definition okay because especially here on the uh, this area we spilled a bit with the super or I spilled a bit with the super glue <laughs> I don't want to <laughs> blame you uh, I loved how you included me on that one isn't it? We, we actually spilled the super glue on this that's the, that's the first time I've made reference to in the techniques <laughs> so yeah I just need to get a little bit of the detail I, I think that's a really good point though to bring up because even something like that it's it's not the end of the world you yeah. know you, you, you can fix it with, with the paint it's it's not something like oh no there's that tiny bit of good I'm that sort of person that, that I would be freaking out at that point you know when I was watching I was thinking oh no I would have to take the skull and, and get it out get get it's, it's sticking to my fingers and I have to get another one and and but it, it's everything's fixable yeah. Some some highlights. Uh, and when you've done the white line um, underneath uh, mm -hmm. the dark line, that's because that's how it would naturally look. The way that the light would hit it, it would hit that that sharp edge, and you would have the shadow of the crack. Is is that correct? Yeah. Okay. No, uh, it's just catches the light on the upper side and um, that's typically true if you're if you're painting any crack effect you, you always want to have that white line underneath not not above yeah. is, that, is that true yeah yeah and here we just dotted in a little bit of highlight color for the teeth here Yeah, I think actually it's already already good like that. Mm. So as you can see, the base so far was like really really simple. Um, the um, the next step is actually one of the the uh, most important steps. Is um, we will fill the uh, the recesses with uh, the first layer of our um, Tamiya Clear Red, show you that. It's that paint here. And it's a very nice color um, to get a, a decent blood effect. Mm. The nice thing is it stays glossy. It does shrink a bit when you use it. So um, you might have to apply several layers of it actually. Uh, 
it's good to let it dry uh, for uh, for about a day or so before you continue with the second layer. You could do layers to two or three millimeters to not have too much shrinking going on. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, one thing is important. Do that also with a brush that is not your most favorite brush because sometimes it uh, just dries a little bit too fast and then you have like small uh, rest of the paint in your brush and as this is not really uh, you can rinse the brush with water or Tamiya um, thinner but uh, make sure do not brush like that stuff is really it's, not it's healthy. really hard yeah it, it will <laughs> it you, will be, you do it once and you yeah, never yeah. do it again um, and, and also i think well uh, uh, ventilated air because this stuff yeah. is quite quite, quite it, yeah it smells quite nasty yeah. All right, so um, let me get a brush for that, and um, can, can I just um, draw back to something you said? How you thought it was quite a simple base, because I'm sitting here looking at this, and I think it's it's quite beautiful and quite complex. But I think um, to to really highlight that you've just taken some simple techniques, yeah, and you've put them together to make something that that looks really fantastic. Yeah, and I think the nice thing about that base is we invested some time, but it's. Especially when you see it from, from the side, you're like, ah, oh, okay, just uh, a yeah, typical skull base. But there you find a lot that you can actually yeah. discover while you take a second look at the corpus himself. Sure. Um, so, yeah, let's rearrange the palette and we'll be back with the Tamiya. Awesome. All right, so we have our base here, uh, the Tamiya Clear Red, and a old dropper of ours. You can see uh, I've already tried if the Tamiya uh, Clear is thin enough to, to actually get it into the dropper. Um, this here is quite fresh. If you leave it open, uh, it will get thicker and you have also an interesting texture actually to create like nasty uh, gore and uh, slime from that. If um, it was too thick, what could you do to fix that? Uh, you could um, add a little bit of the Tamiya thinner to it. There is a thinner from oh, Tamiya okay, yeah. that you could actually use to, to thin these. And these, um, these droppers, they're quite readily available. Yeah. They're fairly they're cheap. Yeah. And quite useful to have. Okay. So, we just try to fill in the Tamiya Clear Red in these larger spots here. And, and at this stage, it's, it's really just a case of being being very careful taking your time. Yeah, and I will take an old brush to pull it into the recesses. It's looking really good. And um, let, let, let's say, for example, you're like me and you've got clumsy fingers and, and you, you accidentally spill some onto the side of the base. Would you say uh, you, you could like pull, pull what's spilled onto the side back into the, back into the recesses, then maybe wait till it dries and you could just re retouch up the black? Yeah. If you, um, I think if you spill too much of that over the side, it would be good to... I just take a paper towel and oh, okay. and get it off and then repaint the black afterwards. But let it dry in between. And if it's like just a really tiny bit, I mean maybe not freak out too much because you know, maybe drops of the blood have been spilling out over the side anyway whilst uh the the chaos guys have been advancing and, and stepping in uh, stepping in the blood. The, the Tamiya Clear is quite important though, right? Because you, you couldn't really make something like that. It's not like with the wash, you could, you could make a wash. Yeah. yeah. It's really important that you, you uh, use that color because um, the, the effect is so nice uh, because it dries glossy and mm -hmm. you have that consistency that is just perfect. Some people... Um, some people you you can also add like maybe a 
a tiny tip of black or something if you wanted a slightly darker effect, right? Yeah. If I would use it on a, on a weapon, I think I would also uh, add black to have also more dried blood and not always these like super fresh. Sure. Because that's the advantage with this Tell Me and Clear, it, it dries to that glossy effect and it, it does look like fresh blood. It's always funny when you use it and you have like, you spilled something on your fingers. Later on, you, I had that a few times just thinking, <gasps> I cut myself. Oh, no. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right, the Tamiya. So now I'm just using um, the, the brush to pull it a little bit more precise on the edges where I want the, the blood to dry. So for here, here, for example, I just want to have a straight line of the blood. So the surface tension of the material, I can really work a nice shape around here. Also, just uh, taking something like a piece of wire can be quite nice to just ah okay. And it's these these little touches that really help finish it off. Yeah, because otherwise, you know, it looks like just if you would have poured something in there. Right. And yeah, you need to make it uh, somehow really work in the in the details as well. This is it's a really cool base, dude. Mm, we will also add. Might have seen it already here on, on screen. Um, these are actually little, um, not really beads because they're, they're solid little glass balls. They're, um, I found them in the hobby store. They're um, to actually to give a little effect for window color. So window color is a color that you can draw pictures on, on, on onto a piece of clear plastic and then stick it to the window. Um, but these are quite nice because we will use them kind of as bubbles in the blood. Oh man! So something like this, I'm, I'm sure, if you don't have um, uh, like a craft store in your area, I'm sure if you if you, they'd probably be available from like a bead store online, even though they're not technically beads. Yeah, they, they probably would more than likely have something like this. Um, and it can be quite fun as well just to look through at the other stuff that, mm -hmm. that online stores have, so something that you might not th that usually think of. Yeah. yeah, it's always good to to be very open when it comes to collecting materials for 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 your miniature projects, because sometimes uh, the stuff that you don't expect really makes a difference. Because mm. uh, you have to be careful that you're not doing all the same, because miniatures are usually already like you you can buy them and there is if you bring them for example to a contest there's quite a big chance that other person has exact the same miniature so right stuff like that can just make little difference even stuff um like say when you're, you're just going for a walk you can see like um bits of bits of wood some some funky stones um, you see they those really work really nice in the in the texture so the the blood. It gives it that kind of more that, that there's something happening in there. Yeah. You know, there's something chaosy. I suggested to Ben whether he could uh, sculpt like a tiny fish like creature or have like fish resemblance. So it kind of looked that, that this was the sort of place that the, 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 dog. the, the dog was born out of, but uh, I got shot down pretty quickly on that. <laughs> Yeah, because I thought, you know, you put all that effort in in getting getting a fish-like creature and then you cover it with the Timmy <laughs> clear and see nothing. So, yeah, that's another reason why I also didn't really waste any time on getting, like, extremely soft blendings on those. Um, because, you see, it's really, in the end, uh, hard to see.
All right. So um, I really like the, the 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 look of it and the depth it got. It's fantastic. Um, we will let that dry and maybe in the end, if it's shrinking too much, add another layer of um, either the clear or uh, the clear red, or maybe even a layer of Tamiya clear, just to give it a thin translucent coat over it. But uh, for now, we need to let that dry definitely overnight. And the Tamiya Clear essentially is, is it's from the same line. It's not mm -hmm. like a because I was asking Ben off camera. It's not like a gloss or anything. It's it's just essentially it's exactly the same stuff but clear. Yeah. Um. There, there's like a wide range of of different ones you can get. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like uh, the orange is quite nice. The yellow one is uh, really cool as well because uh, for oil stains it's just perfect. It stays uh, oh, glossy and just course. with a tiny bit of uh, of black in there, it gets that raw oil look. It's really really cool. Oh, I like that. That's nice. Some, something actually I've noticed as well with the with the skulls, you've got some that even though they're, they're above the, the waterline, they're kind of emerged with yeah. the blood and some are quite fresh. Mm -hmm. um, if Would you say that if, like, if, if you're at home and, and you're trying this, you could have a little bit of fun with it. If you want to have them a bit more bloody, you can make sure the blood's going over the top or, yeah. or kind of like stipple with the... Uh, yeah. Oh, cool. What, like what Ben's doing now <laughs> on camera. Um, you, you, you can really have some fun with it. You know, don't don't think that oh, I have to have whatever, like nine of these sticking out, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. covered. It just just kind of you, you're going to know what, what looks good. Yeah. Good point. Just feel, feel free to play a bit with that. And I think that you, if you do that for your whole army, it could look really, really nice. Yeah. And it's actually a fast effect, especially if you don't waste too much time in painting the, the bones that are in here and the, the skulls in there. If you just dry brush them, it sure. works very good as well. All right, so um, we'll come back with the dry base. All right, so here we are. Uh, Corvus Cool and the gang uh, are glued to the base. And yeah, I'm, uh, just, I'm really happy uh, also how the, these skulls actually fit together with, uh, with the rest of the model and how it looks like it's it's one piece um, but we before we do like the final uh, roundup on the miniature we would like to answer some of the questions that you guys have uh, asked mm -hmm. we've uh, th there were quite a few responses on um, YouTube and slack mm -hmm. uh, Michael has been addressing quite a few on YouTube so yeah. it's cool hopefully you guys enjoyed that um, do you want to take the YouTube <coughs> ones first? Yeah, I think YouTube is good. Um, the, the, the biggest one was about the paint that you're using, yeah. the, the Schmincker. The, the uh, yeah, uh, for, yeah, right. A lot of people ask questions about the white that I'm using. And um, let me just get the tube in uh, to the frame. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm using uh, this uh, by a German brand, a brand called uh, Schmincke. And um, it's fine artist acrylic white. And actually, you could use any white. Um, I did the loaded brush uh, for a long time with ivory because I really like that tone from model color as well. Um, this year is just a little bit more brilliant, so um, that really uh, helps to maximize the contrast. So um, just feel free and experiment with, with different brands. Uh, golden acrylics are also fantastic to do, uh, to do that. I prefer to use just a color with a heavier body, so a thicker color, because it's more, um, it's highly pigmented. And it's just nice for the loaded brush to have the color in the tip of the brush a little bit thicker. But uh, yeah, you could uh, have that with using a, a two weeks old Games of Show paint. So I think, <laughs> I think there's even by Liquitex. I think they even yeah. have something called heavy body white. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's Liquitex. also the golden acrylics also have like the heavy body colors. Right. And heavy body just means they're thicker in consistency and right. have a stronger pigmentation. Would Would you say it's it's like um, th there are many whites out there, but it's like because um, your your paint is a tool, the same as your brush, yeah. the same as anything else. It just it happens to be that that's the one that you like to use. Yeah. In the same and way that someone else might have a different way, and and in the way that you paint, you might find that's better for you. Yeah, definitely. And I think I discovered that white like I don't know two months ago, three months ago. Right. Before that, I was using other colors, and I guess in one or two years, I will have a different white sure. for for my highlights. It's just something. 
um, try out different brands, different different colors, um, different consistencies, and play with that and see what really fits your needs actually. So uh, I don't want you all to uh, uh, go out and buy the Schminke color because it's the secret color that right. will it's, there, there, there is no solve such thing as problems. magic paint. It's yeah, yeah, just yeah. that particular, yeah. that just happens to be the one that you like. Yeah. Cool. Uh, something right. else actually as well from, um, from Slack, our mm -hmm. 24 hour chat thing. Someone was asking as well, the, with the Schminke, it, it can come in like these plastic yeah. tubes. Um, is is that the same stuff? Do you know? Uh, I'm I'm really also not 100 percent sure. sure. Um, I guess it's the same as long as it, uh, it says uh, the uh, prime acryl. Right. That's like the highest standard of the Schminke Schminke colors. Okay. So there are different like it's for most of the artist colors that you can uh, buy in in hobby stores, is. Um, they have like at least two different uh, quality levels. One is for students, as it's a cheaper pigmentation. The pigments are slightly th bigger. They're slightly thicker. So, yeah. so when you're painting with miniatures, you want that finer pigment. Yeah. That's that's typically with Vallejo Games Workshop. Is mm -hmm. they have that finer pigment. Yeah. It's designed for miniatures. Yeah, yeah. So if you paint a huge canvas, it doesn't really matter because right. you're not looking at it that close. And you wouldn't want to use yeah. your, your <laughs> Games Workshop paint just to, yeah. to paint giant canvas. <laughs> yeah, so um, yeah, just uh, just uh, look for the artist quality. Color. Speaking of Slack, we had a question, uh, we had a message from one of the guys, and um, they saw the picture of Cool in the Game, thinks it's amazing, and uh, he wanted to know if there's... Um, if, if the technique that you've used with the blood, with the Tamiya clear, mm -hmm. if there's any way you could transfer it and do other things with it. Yeah, I think the nice thing about uh, that kind of base design is that you could go for a whole different uh, look by just using not the red, but for example, other ta uh, Tamiya clear colors. Um, also, the green, for example, a clear green, you could make an amaz uh, amazing acid swamp from that or... Uh, also, they they in the clear they have orange, yellow, blue, green. So that would be really cool for like orcs or something. Like you know, they're they run down nuclear reactor type yeah. deals. You know, yeah, 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 some yeah. grotlings running about with some yeah. spanners and and just drips of it coming down places. Yeah, for all kinds of uh, sci-fi oofs, this yeah. is just the the perfect thing. And um, yeah, uh, the the Tamiya um, paints look like that. So uh, you can find them actually in most of the the model shops. Um, because they're uh, huge for vehicle painting uh, in the airbrush as well. A lot of and then there's like there. a variety of colors you can get. Yeah. So yeah, um, also imagine that here just with uh, fewer skulls and some uh, some flowers that could also you have could also get like an awesome uh, hobbit base for example. You know, just just with clear water like like a small pond or some uh, puddles. And you've got the. Um the Tamiya Clear, which you yeah, could mix which is with just, the colors just yeah, to thin yeah, it out just and, and a tiny bit of the color. Uh, color in there together, slightly more blue, for example, but not mm. that strong. Uh, the Tamiya Clear is just perfect for that. Have you tried um, mixing them with inks? Does, does that work? Yeah, it does works not with all of the inks, um, but some uh, flock out a bit. Right. So you have like tiny bits of, uh, for example, I tried it with brown ink, you have tiny bits of the brown ink, but if you do something like a natural river that is actually quite nice because it looks like rest of plants. So, right. So, 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 so you could get the clear stuff and maybe add a bit of ink to make your own custom yeah. ones if you didn't want to then buy yeah, loads yeah. and loads of different yeah, colors. Yeah, so sure. you could just, just for a cheaper yeah. option. Yeah, yeah. It will get more opaque if you use real colors, not inks, but... Sure. But again, it's something that you can play yeah. around with. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Especially for murky water, that is really nice as well mm -hmm. to play a little with that. Um, and again... We say these are extremely toxic. Be careful. Yeah, they're, they're very very toxic. So, um, all right. Um, I hope that answered the question so far. And, um, and if you have more, please put them in yeah, the YouTube comments. Definitely. Um, make, make sure to pay attention to the videos because there, there were a couple that had actually been addressed in the video. But um, yeah, if, if you if you see something that that you you haven't seen Ben do or, or you you want us to to teach that something specific just just put them down and, and we're yeah. always reading them mm -hmm. okay